Hello everyone, welcome to Mind Pump. In this episode, we talk about how to avoid getting sick this winter. We give you some tips and tricks. Later on in the episode, we talk about how Bang Energy is filing for bankruptcy. I declare bankruptcy! As well as other topics. In the second half of the show, we answer four questions from our Mind Pump Media Instagram account. Questions such as, does doing cardio make you hungrier than doing resistance training? How can I prevent shin splints and knee pain from running? Can I lose 75 pounds in a year and a half and do it in a healthy way? And what's the best way to make friends with people I admire? Finally, it's the holiday season. No doubt you're going to be spending time with friends and family. They may be asking you questions about fitness. You may not have the answer. Well, we do. At Mind Pump Clips, you can give them short clips from the show and teach them everything they need to know. All right, enjoy the show. Newsflash, the best way to prevent illness is to be, to be fit, healthy, and lean. All the other stuff, forget about it. Just be fit, healthy, and lean. <laughs> <laughs> that was hard to get out. That's so very terrible geez. advice. No, okay. Uh, no, you know why I'm saying that? Because what? people, uh, when, when you know, like, you know, cold and flu season and, you know, whatever virus, you know, virus season or whatever comes around, People do all kinds of different things except for addressing the main, the main right. things, yeah. which is just like just being generally fit, healthy, not being overweight, getting good sleep. Like that is like 98% of all of it. Yeah. Then after that, then the 2%, you could add, you know, supplements and techniques and herbs right. and things that'll help. But aside from that, like just just be generally healthy. Now that I I, I would think if we were to organize this as a hierarchy that would be the top right? yes that's the most yeah. important but then right after that would you say trying to specifically strengthen the immune system through certain adaptations you don't want to have deficiencies that's a big one right so they found for example during the uh during the height of covid they found that people with low glutathione levels um there was a strong correlation between uh glut glutathione deficiency and severe covid right so um, glutathione's a master antioxidant. You could supplement with it. Like um, we work with a company called Live On and they have liposomal glutathione. That'll raise glutathione levels. Being overall healthy, eating lots of uh, a wide variety of fruits and vegetables in your diet. We'll do that as well. Vitamin C, mm -hmm. well, high, high amounts of vitamin so C. So I stack down. the glutathione and the vitamin C from Live On Labs. Right now I'm doing it because Max is sick at the house. So he's been sick this this past week. You can, he eats the glutathione? How do you get him to eat No, that? no, no. I, oh, for you. I, yeah, I do it to oh. hopefully trying to be preventative, right? Yeah, as soon yeah, as yeah. I notice like he's got a runny nose or something, I start to consistently do that. And between that and then what I've told you guys I've been doing with the cold plunge, I feel like I've been... <laughs> Pretty yeah, resistant. You're yeah. not gonna be able to sneak that in his pancakes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you ain't sneaking none of that shit, Daddy. <laughs> no, I mean um, uh, that that you know those those are some compounds that help. There's some mushrooms that help as well. Reishi mushrooms got some immune boosting effects and can can help. Um, yeah, but, but what would you go? I, mean, I don't want you to go too far or too fast because I I really I I'm more, I'm trying to get better on how I communicate this to like family and friends on. Yeah. Uh, how they should do this or why they should do this, even better than supplementation. Wouldn't you agree me training hot, cold contrast benefits me even more to being re resilient when it so comes to So it's similar like to exercise, right? Yeah. Hot and cold contrast is a stress on the body. And so the theory behind it is that because you're training your body's ability to acclimate to different temperatures, it's a hormetic stress, right? Mm -hmm. Just like exercise. Exercise is a stress on the body and your body strengthens itself in order to adapt to the exercise. The same thing with, this is why if you've ever done the sauna for consistently for a length period of time, or you've ever done cold uh, dips or cold showers for a certain period of time, you notice they get easier to do. You, they, your body acclimates better to them. They're not as shocking or as challenging yeah. to the body because your body strengthens through that stress response. <clears throat> so that strengthening through the stress response is precisely uh, what they believe to be what strengthens the immune system. Yeah. Now, when it comes to nutrients, you don't want to have nutrient deficiencies. The common ones are vitamin D, zinc. Uh, you know, you can have a glutathione deficiency uh, depending on stress levels and all that stuff. So, you know, supplementing the, with those is not a bad idea if you believe to be at a deficiency. But other than that, like if you're, you take care of yourself and you're healthy and fit, you're not overtrained, you get good sleep, you have a good diet, 
the odds that you will get sick are lower. And then the odds that if you do get sick, it's going to remain mild and not become severe. Yeah. Well, too, like way better, you know, a little bit before the, the supplements, like, this is where I kind of get, um, uh, in terms of, um, eating for the season. Like I, I find some validity there because of what's provided in terms of the nutrients, minerals and everything else it provides, um, as you, you move in towards the winter and like you're seeing less sun. So, you know, like finding foods that, you know, will provide you with omega and with, you know, ways to get vitamin D and, and yeah. ways to get vitamin C. And, um, so you just kind of, it, it's, it's like a natural nature's hack, uh, so to speak, in terms of like just focusing on those specific food yeah, groups. You know what I find for me is uh, uh, the biggest issue for me is being overtrained. If I'm overtrained mm -hmm. and then I get around a virus, I get sick. So, and that's just because I'm always I'm consistent with exercise. So for me, it's not. Well, like it also is this. I mean, think about that logically. Is like you are again working out as a stress. You're yep. you're beating the body up, so the body also has to recover to adapt, and so. If it's also potentially fighting off a cold that it may get, you're already prioritizing, telling it to prioritize recovery from yep. getting beat up, beat, up in the gym, beat up in the gym. So it, do it doesn't have as much strength to apply towards fighting off a cold. So yeah, it's reducing the stress in the gym, increasing all the supplements we're talking about, hot, cold contrast training is what, I, what I'm getting as a takeaway. good sleep. Yeah. Really yeah. good sleep. You know, that makes a big difference. I, I guess a good analogy would be like, if you have X amount of soldiers you don't want them to have to fight two or three different wars at the same time, right? You want them to be focused on one enemy. And if you're overtrained or you don't work out at all and you just have poor health, you have poor insulin sensitivity, you don't have a lot of muscle. You know, muscle is very protective when it comes to illness. We found this with, with COVID. We found that body fat, having too much body fat, greatly increased your risk of severe um, effects. And having little muscle did that. So having a lot of muscle, less body fat, made it less likely that you would have severe effect. And this is true for all illnesses. Now, the immune system's super complex. So you could still be, get sick because you have zero immunity to an illness. It could catch you off guard. takes your body a while to you know, get ramped up and, and to identify this virus or whatever. So that's still is true. But all that stuff being equal, like if you go into sick season – being fit and healthy and rested, yeah, you're way better off. Well, and I'm not like demonizing sugar or alcohol or anything, but if you, uh, there has to be like a statistic out there in terms of like when the consumption of sugar and alcohol increases substantially, I would have to assume it's like over the holiday seasons and the winter yeah. and all that coming back in. It's just, it's interesting to, to see that just naturally ramp up, even with myself, like what's just available and what's around uh, that you're always kind of picking at. Yeah, You know what I find interesting is that, cause I've read up on this and there's a few theories <laughs> as to why there's like a flu season to begin with like why does it seem to like surface certain times of the year and the the biggest theories or the greatest theories i i, I would say are um lack of sunlight so people are always kind of borderline vitamin d then it gets kind of cold cloudy vitamin d levels drop immune system is compromised plus we're more indoors so we're less likely to be outside plus we're more likely to be around you know in close in contact close proximity with, with, with crowds yeah mm -hmm. with crowds because you have holidays so you combine those three together and then you have this, you know, uh, season where people tend to get sick. But, you know, that's getting worse. You know, this is one of the worst, um, like, cold and flu seasons we've had in a long time. My uh, my best friend's wife is a nurse. Yep. <clears throat> and she was just talking to Katrina the uh, night before last and saying that the hospitals are, like, overwhelmed right now. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of kids in there. RSV. Uh, that too. Yeah, RSV is yeah. a big that, one. They're seeing that higher than they've ever seen before in addition to like the flu and cold and, cold and normal. So, that's so I have a theory around that. I think we, we were so isolated for so long and everybody was so afraid that our immune systems took a hit from doing that. Not sure. to mention the activity and all that stuff because being exposed to things all the time keeps the immune system primed. Uh -huh. So it's like now everybody's like full force and it's like your, our immune systems aren't prepared. That's my theory. Like you least. had that, like you said, that hormetic sort of uh, uh, response to that, like having small doses, just being in close contact, but like, you, you know, like minimizing like the full dose of it. Like, I think that does play a factor. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, Black Friday sale is here. 60% off all MAPS workout programs, including bundles, everything. Everything 60% off at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Use the code Black Friday for the discount. Now, to celebrate, I'm going to give away a MAPS super bundle for free. Here's how you can enter to win. 
Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. And if you win, we'll notify you in the comment section. Okay, everybody else, check out the Black Friday sale. Again, 60% off everything at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just don't forget to use the code Black Friday. All right, here comes the show. Anyway. How excited are you guys uh, for the live event? A couple more weeks. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm excited, man. Woo. We'll uh, see, man. Yeah. Three, three years. Three years since we did it. Gonna get a like shake off the rust. This yeah, is the only bit. time we we really meet people uh, in person and really get to like talk to people and it's a good time. Max Lugavier is gonna be there, which is great. He's one of my favorite people in the world, not just you know in the space, but just period. Great yeah, guy. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I don't know. Do you think there'll be tickets available when this airs? I don't know. I think there'll be general admission, but we've already sold out of VIP. Okay. Yeah, VIP is sold out. Where do people go, Doug, if people want to attend? Mindpumplive.com. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we'll answer questions. You you have an, you meet us. You're here at Mind Pump headquarters here in San Jose, so you can see the studio, the whole deal. But it's a good time. There'll be like, I don't know, like what, 100 people? Mm -hmm. Maybe. So it's a smallish group. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be 100 plus probably our, some of our close family and friends will be around. Yeah. They typically in there. So a little over, a little over 100. It'll we'll, be we'll good. Be there. But that'll feel... Uh, super intimate here, you know, dude. So I just read. So obviously, Black Friday. When this airs tomorrow is Black Friday, which is the biggest retail day of the year uh, in 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 America. Yeah. By the way, uh, for us, Black Friday means sixty percent off any and all Maps workout programs, which is by far the biggest sale that and we bundles, yeah. and bundles too. So Holy only time we do that. So sixty percent off anything and everything. Uh, right now during this time. But anyway, I looked up the origins of Black Friday. You guys want to hear? <laughs> oh, God. Oh yeah, God. you guys want to hear? I'm going to go ahead and cringe now. Yeah. Well, no, there's some good. myths around uh, wh where that came from. Let me hear the myths. Okay, yeah. so uh, one of them was that, um, that after an entire year of operating at a loss, which is in the red, stores would then supposedly earn a profit on the day after Thanksgiving, and that's going into the black. So that's a myth, though. That's not true. Oh, but that's okay. a myth. That's that's, that's that'd be a good one, though. Yeah. Here's another myth. Plausible. This one's a, this is a terrible myth that I read. I, this is in. So I'm reading. Uh, what is this? History.com. It's a good website. Here's a. This is not true, by the way. This is a myth. It claimed that in the 1800s, Southern plantation owners could buy slaves at a discount on the day after Thanksgiving, and that's where they got the roots of that. That's oh not my true. god. That's also a myth. that would never last in this this time. No. This era, that was found out. <laughs> just to turn be, that into yeah, retail. No, if that was found out to be true, <laughs> that would be canceled <laughs> so fast. Canceled. Maybe. No. Maybe. So I don't know, man. Retail off. companies, they that, would change that that, that oh narrative real quick. Oh my wow. god. Yeah, that's a good point. They would they would they would spin that narrative real quick to yeah. be something else. So here's the real Oh yeah, let's hear that. Uh, well, okay, can we okay, would any of us guess? Would we would we I mean, you probably the real would. origin of it. Yeah. What would you guys give me? Say? Can, can you give me an era or a time at least? So, so it happened in the 1950s and 60s. I mean, so that's that's, where it really that's, that's right when ads Depression got. Depression. That's when the whole when you had like Mad Men, right? The ad, the advertising industry mm. exploded at that time. Yeah. So it definitely is a completely fabricated. It became advertising thing. It became nationwide in the 80s, but the origins were in the like late 50s. Right. Right. When 60s. advertising got big. Yeah. So. Do you have any guesses? Uh, I know. I need to chew so on So it's got negative. It's got negative roots. So oh, think no. of why it would be called Black Friday, right? So it's got some negative roots. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, some kind of- um, Now you're setting us up for a trap. I don't want to do well, that. Well, that's why I was thinking Great, <laughs> great, <laughs> great Depression no, no, or go, something. No, go right? ahead and tell us. Because <laughs> I don't want to- take a fire that. sale for stuff. Well, so the origin was in Philadelphia, and it was a term used by police to describe the chaos that ensued the day after Thanksgiving when suburban shoppers and tourists- flooded into the city in advance of the big Army Navy football game that would be held on Saturday every year. So, and they were not allowed to take the day off. They had extra long shifts. Shoplifters would take advantage of it and, you know, of the day because of the craziness or whatever. So oh. law enforcement in Philadelphia called it Black Friday. They said, this is, you know, Black Friday. Because of the chaos. Know, just the chaos yeah. and whatever. Now mm. in the, it didn't spread nationwide until the 80s when, retailers found a way to reinvent Black Friday and turn it into something positive. And so the result was a, a red to black concept of the early uh, of the holiday mentioned earlier. So in other words, this is when we're really going to like push profits. Yeah. And then, you know, retailers turned it into this nation. You know, it rem it's, uh, mm. it's brilliant. Business. Do you remember, is, right? do, do you know, that's the, uh, the origin of the 24 hour fitness Hawaii trip is oh what, yeah it came from i'm mark, surprised they, they were so they actually they told me the same story That's so, so yeah i mean i imagine it's true mark mastroff at least that's what he told me 
uh, would say that in July was their worst slowest uh, yeah slowest time of the year and the reasoning was mm. it's you know because a lot of their clubs were based out of california at that time sunny holiday nice weather. holidays vacation everybody takes yeah, off so, no, so they wouldn't sell any membership so membership sales and so it was historically the worst month of the year and so they went out and he made this incredible spiff and challenge right that these this hawaii trip that you could win if you were top salespeople. And so it just motivated everybody to get out there and be aggressive and generate more leads. And they gave away a Hawaii yeah, trip to members. Season. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they gave away. A bunch, so yeah, he he invested in it um, and took a risk at making it a, a big competition where he'd end up spending more money. And then it resulted in the you know biggest month of the year going forward forever after that. I think that's kind of interesting. I think it just just shows you the power of that. Like if you put a little of energy and focus in that direction on what you could do, and it's like these all these businesses got smart. So oh, I've, yeah, I, and the way you would enter to win as a member was every time you worked out, you could fill out an entry form. So the more you worked out, yeah, the more entry forms you could. It was brilliant yeah. in every aspect. They got traffic up. It made all the the sales guys go get more more leads to to generate more sales. Like yeah, it was. Uh, now did you guys? Yeah, smart. Boy, I'm gonna get some people so in trouble. Smart. I'm going to get some people. Oh, here we go. Yeah, here we go. Let's go back. This is back in time. This is before. (laughs) This is when I was young and didn't know. I didn't really understand. So I just kind of did what I was, you know, but anyway, anyway, no excuses. So I did not not sandbag if that's what you're going to ask. No, that's not what I'm going to ask. No, that's weak, dude. Yeah, That's not the same. Okay. That's weak. But I'm wondering if you do the same thing where it's Hawaii giveaway month Uh and Somebody buys a membership and you'd be like, I'll give you 15 entry forms if you sign up. Today. Oh, well, uh, I didn't do, I didn't do, <laughs> that's terrible. I didn't do uh, membership sales. So I didn't have to use, yeah, I didn't that's use a total stuff. hustle right there. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't use, not but, that you'd win, but I'll give you extra entry. But I, yeah, I yeah, but what right. I would say, what I will say is that I probably did things like this where I had huge packages where I'd sell someone a hundred sessions and I'd be like, listen, you do a hundred sessions. I'll give you five free on me. Oh. And then I would train somebody on, on my own time to sell a massive package. That was illegal. It was illegal to yeah. do that. So I definitely did some stuff like that. And the reason why it was illegal because it's time and labor laws because I'm working off the clock and the company could get sued for something like that. But the way I justify it, it's like, it's my fucking time. Yeah. I'm going to work. Yeah. Which, if you're a company, yeah. like such a brilliant way to structure things because you know, you know it probably happens and you just kind of brush it under the table and go like, you Dude, know, I, do I whatever just, it takes. I just remembered right. when we did, because we I would often put together contests uh, just for the members that from like retailers and stuff that I could uh, set up like trades with. And I would do my own like this Saturday, you know, come enter to win or whatever. And we give stuff away like, you know, free sandwiches at the sandwich shop for the next 30 days or whatever. So we did that. And the, one of the prizes was, uh, was six months of free tanning at this local tanning salon. Well, <laughs> well we give away that we had, I mean, there was a lot of giveaways. So that was like the fifth prize down the list. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So we're calling people's names out and they're coming up and it was this huge thing with this big party, all these balloons or whatever. And I'm like, you know, six months worth of free tanning. And this Nigerian guy walks up <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> he goes, right. he goes, what am I going to do with this? And the whole gym was like, oh shit. <laughs> he oh, gave it away no. to the guy next to him. <laughs> Bro, we were, I was, I don't know. I was like, is this funny? Like, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah, I know. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, dude, this is not going to work. But though. anyway, yeah. but it's, a, it's, a, it's, what's the, what are the numbers on Black Friday? Like how much of an oh, increase my God. in sales? It's, it's, there's some, there's some companies that uh, I've seen the numbers before where they, they do like their entire revenue in November. What? Yeah, for like a year. Like they, they like November. I've, out heard, of I've heard that. From yeah, some yeah. Companies. Some companies will outproduce uh, their sales for the year in just November. Like, what do you speculate? Like industry wise, ben- like benefits the most from. Ooh, what industry? Yeah. Oh, retail. Yeah. I like guess like stuff, clothes. But I mean, in, in terms products. of like tech. Yeah, I was gonna say like tax got to be up um there. so i don't know about that the you know the best you know the best time of year to buy a uh, big screen tv is when it's super bowl weekend oh yeah that's mm-hmm. when they have the, the best, best the best oh, deal the, the best deals for tvs are super bowl weekend on uh better really? than black friday huh better than black friday interesting uh, really even though black friday has good deals too i've bought some tvs on black friday it's a good deal too but even better would be in january i think it has something to do with when the new models come out and then being able to get I the think old ones Cy- now does cyber monday because then there's cyber monday now because right? um, the internet came and they're like we're gonna do our own thing yeah is i feel like you get better deals on cyber monday than than black friday now 
Yeah, Am I, I tripping? I'm wondering about that. I don't think that. that I don't think it's as clear as like Doug it, says. No, Doug's really. I good. don't. I don't think so. Yeah, it just depends. Like there's certain that, like just okay, roll like it I, over. I think to Monday the yeah electronic so, brands. Yeah, it depends on the stuff, right? I mean, there, I think maybe some brands they might have better deals on Monday than other uh, other brands, but other things require you to be there. You know what some of these retailers do? In fact, I think you might have brought this up a long time ago. Don't some retailers? actually lose money on some products to, attract- to get you in right to get you in the store they'll take a hit on a product well you know does costco does that year round oh my for- god you can get two dollar oh. hot dogs still yeah. yeah do you guys know that they still sell two dollar and how much is their yeah, rotisserie no. no it's brilliant like five bucks same I, thing goes for I their thought it was a dollar fifty and everybody's getting pissed. Oh, maybe you're right. Like going to go up to like two. And yeah. like, God forbid. You're right. Yeah, dollar fifty. Yeah, their their whole chickens. They they take a loss on that. There was a huge article on them on on that. Like, so they actually take a loss, which is a very popular. Almost everybody buys rotisserie chicken, right? And yeah, they, it's already mm-hmm. done, and then they they eat it. They they have the best deals there, and they literally lose money because they know that you're not going to go there and just get a freaking chick, a whole chicken. <laughs> so you're going to wow. get something to go with the chicken and probably grocery shop. And so yeah. it's a it's an absolutely we'll that. brilliant yeah. strategy. Yeah. You know, talking about businesses, did you guys see uh, um, Bang Bang just filed for bankruptcy? Wow. I did see that. Yeah. Bang, now, bang, what's bang. the deal? What's bang, the bang. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they're. Dude, I just okay. That, fitness I, expos are going to be a lot less. Like, oh, I know. I know. No more uh, stripper poles. Yeah. Oh man. Dude, no more t-shirt shame. cannons and stripper poles. <laughs> <laughs> they were the last one. Of that, that CEO, bro, that was thing. like he was. He was. He was fun to watch, dude. Yeah. <laughs> he was an interesting character. He's gonna have to return all his bling. He, yeah. he literally what looks what like do? what you would imagine the banks. They got the, they got like. the shit suit out of them, dude. Is that yeah. why they got the shit suit? Monster out of Energy, they, right? Monster got them, but so did like they got lawsuits too for um their claims. They were making claims for the like the nutrients in there that help fight cancer and do like in the what? said they had create they had like this special creatine in there they didn't even have creatine in there like they they got fucked there was a lot of claims it's that they made and they got nailed for that bro. and then the then Pepsi I think I believe Pepsi is the distributor for them maybe Doug's looking the article up and can fact check me on stuff I think Pepsi is the distributor and because of all the lawsuits they couldn't commit they couldn't fall through on their di- distribution contract or that oh. so then Pepsi filed like a 120 million dollar lawsuit and they oh, won wow. they From won all angles so they're yeah. like out so they just got they got crushed wow, wow. yeah they got they, they, well that they, that whole market's so weird to me cuz <laughs> i never would have thought i would go to a gas station and find a 300 milligram caffeine drink yeah that is that was that's insane <clears throat> that was non-existent you know, when I was younger, just no. a, just a decade or two ago, yeah. three hundred milligram caffeine drink sitting on there, with, you know, that's and it's like unicorn dust flavor or whatever they, you know, the names. Are. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, yeah. How is that even? That's crazy to me. Yeah, it's wild that because uh, I, mean, I remember when Red Bull was a big deal. And that was, uh, what is that? Uh, Eighty milligrams of caffeine. Well, Red so Red Bull. Talk about like such a great yeah, what is the, Red Bull business model was so brilliant. I mean, there's so many people that there's so many businesses now that have. Uh, tried to emulate what Red Bull did. Uh, in fact, you okay? Actually, what we see right now, the phenomenon that we see in um, uh, af- af- like affiliate marketing within Instagram and stuff like that, like through influencers, that is literally a, a ripoff of Red Bull. Red Bull went and found small people in in sports oh, that, that were, were not that were not uh, that were huge. They weren't really were, monetized that, that thing, were right? that were yeah. influencing a network of say yeah, right. ten thousand people. Yeah, I saw that. And they would they would go sponsor the events. They would blow it up. They would do all this, and they, but they would win over those ten thousand people. That's the same concept. Are they as responsible like a, for X Games? I feel like yes. that was all part of that. Whole they were a part of all of that uprising. They yeah. were the, a lot of the sports that are in X Games. We're already working because Monster they were there, is but they X Games now. Yeah, and they didn't get a lot of eyes and traction. They were. They, I mean, when you think of like the downhill mountain biking and the kite surfing and all, all these things that we're all familiar with today, that mm-hmm. have been, people have been doing that forever. Yeah. But it got popular because Red Bull made it made it popular, and that model is what you see Shreds do. You saw First Form blew up their business That's a good that point. way. They built that. Yeah, Absolutely. They started, they started that. that Justin, that you, is them. You were a, yeah. a bartender. Yeah. What kind of person? Is there a stereotypical person that gets a Red Bull vodka drink for, <laughs> when, they go the, when they go to the bar? Yeah, they're they're probably looking at like some bro? of your homies, dude. With hey, the, bro, I used to with the I spiky used to, hair yeah, dude, I used and the, to um, Red Bull vodka. Yeah, yeah the stripy a, uh, button up tea. Yeah, it's yeah. the it's the low calorie. You know, get me. Yeah, exactly. And, it's the I want to I want to rage all night and fist pump, but like also I want to be like messed up. Yeah, you know, yeah. recipe for a headache too, oh. dude. like guaranteed dude, headache. Have you guys ever tried uh, Red Bull from Thailand? Have you guys ever seen the Thailand? <laughs> yeah, they have the, like 
like little weird bottles. It's, I've never tried them though, but I've seen them. Is, it, is that the origin of it? Like they, uh, I'm pretty sure he. Okay, so the the founder like flew somewhere out there. Uh, I don't know if it's Thailand, but it was somewhere like uh, origins of Red Bull. Let's see. Yeah, and, and then and tasted some like um, vitamin drink and was like totally inspired by it. Well, I don't. All I know is it was big in the Thai fighting space. So I used to when I used to manage the tw the, the twenty four on Hillsdale. Yeah, Mike Swick, yep. who now he now runs a big you know MMA school in Thailand. He was a at one point he was one of the top middleweight fighters in the UFC. Great guy, super nice guy. Super humble guy. He was a great trainer for me. Super cool guy. And it's just all the members loved him. But he's obviously a badass. He used to, when he worked for me, he would take a week off here and there and he would fly to Thailand to train. And he brought back a case of Red Bull from Thailand. And it had the, you know, the brand on it, but it was, you know, Thai writing. So it didn't say anything in English. And they were glass bottles that were like this big. Mm. They were not carbonated. So it was like he's he's got it right there. He's the original Red shooters. Bull was a Thai energy drink called, what does that say? Creating Ding. Creating Ding. Marketed to truckers, farmers, and construction workers. The original had a similar blend of caffeine. Can you look up the picture of that, Doug? Put Thai, put original Thai Red Bull. Wow. So it was this glass bottle, and he'd bring it in. He's like, bro, you got to try this. I'm like, really? Is it? He's like, yeah. So I, I would buy, yeah, dude. <laughs> uh, I mean, it looks like you're drinking that's it. something that's going to, Make you go crazy. Right? What's so smart, what they did too, was that by by getting into these small groups, they didn't have to compete with these massive, huge change. And so, I mean, you still see the price of Red Bull. Yeah. I mean, a Red Bull is like $4 for a, for like the tiniest little you know what's also You know yeah. what also is crazy And yet they them? still crush. They dominate. Yeah. And still, they, they still. They were the first to market. That's right. You know what else is crazy about them? Huh. So very rarely will you find a company that will invent a flavor. Like if I say the word cola. Oh, yeah. Cola flavor was invented by Coke, right? right? What the hell is cola? Like nothing in nature. Say, Red Bull has their own flavor. Yeah. <laughs> you just call it Red Bull. There yeah, is no. It, it tastes it's not like a, Red Bull. It's, what is it? It's like it's like just a bunch of vitamins. It tastes like, like medicine. vitamins. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. You know what's funny <laughs> it though? Tastes it's not first bad. time you it's taste like, it. It's terrible. It's acquired taste. I don't think it, so. It, yeah. I loved it. I definitely, first it was awful. It yeah, is awful. Right. It, it was awful the first time. I I remember it, but then I do. I I've craved it before. So you absolutely it absolutely changes. Like, it's my favorite. I love it. And I used to like. So it's, it doesn't even have a flavor. It just this candy like sweetness. Yeah, because then Rockstar came and they had to like make bigger cans with like more and for a better price. Yeah, and more a uh, caffeine. Mom Everything. Monster, rock star. When you think about what you're getting in a monster and a rock star, and you compare it to a Red Bull, you're getting way more fluid, way more caffeine, way more of everything, and yet you pay. And yet people still pay way more. But that is a testament to brand. Yeah. They did totally. so, they did such a good job of branding and brand loyalty within within the sports that people pay the extra pay the extra money. Dude. It's it's my favorite, and it, it it does remind me of how how high my my caffeine tolerance is because one Red Bull used to get me zipping. Yeah. Now I could drink a red one Red Bull and go to bed. I can, I can sneeze notice. Red Bulls and I'll, I'll be fine. Just in yeah. peace, Red Bull. Just, yeah. I'll cry Red Bull fizzy? tears and I'm, I'm just fine. Dude, speaking, oh, I have a great story for you guys. So I, I got this text uh, driving home yesterday from Courtney, and uh, she was actually said something like Everett's. I had to pick Everett home early, you know, from school, and I'm like, what? And so I like pick up the phone, I call her, I'm like, what? What happened? Something happened at school because we've had some things happen in the past. And uh, I didn't know if he was like getting in a fight or like there was some, you know, he was sick or whatever it was. So it turns out that um, he, he basically got, got called. Um, they called Courtney to come down, pick him up because he was throwing up all over the place. What? And it's like, Oh no, is he sick? No. He was spinning at recess <laughs> <laughs> to the point where he made himself so sick that he just started puking everywhere. And then she had to go pick him up early from school. And I'm like, oh, that's your, my that's, God, that's, that's my your, kid that's right so there, dude. Kid, that's bro. my kid. That reminds me of that video <laughs> yeah. that she caught of him doing circles yeah. with, the, with the thing. So does he like to do that? Does he like to make himself dizzy? I don't know. I didn't know. Like, I saw that, like. A couple times he would do that outside on his own, but it wasn't like, it's not like a thing. Uh, but, and I was like, <laughs> the funny part, I'm like, I'm like, what were you thinking? But I was like, w was there you know, some of your friends? Like you guys all had this like challenge or like what? No, just by himself. <laughs> it's been so many times he made himself sick. <laughs> Sal, didn't you threw up? Didn't you share a, a study a long time ago on Mind Pump that, uh, 
that there's some that kids are drawn to that. Isn't there a thing? Isn't it's there an altered state it's like of a drug? Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, a- animals. That's why we humans. have the merry-go-rounds on the on most like. It's parts. an altered state of consciousness. Mm-hmm. So it's like you, you're even as a kid, you are naturally drawn to it. Maybe that's dr- what that's what the research was that you were yeah. saying that like basically we're all all of us as, even at our l- lowest levels a child is drawn to the all. Maybe that's what it was. We we're talking about drugs and, we were. and wanting to alter your state of consciousness, yeah. and that it is a very natural pull for us to do that. That even as children, we do things like spin around on like you know we observe this in animals too. Do you know that dolphins? Will pass around a puffer fish because yeah. they get high off of it. There's a ton yeah. of animals. There's a there's the birds. <laughs> so you imagine the the poor puffer fish. There's a like, bird. There's a bird that uh, there's a bird that allows certain ants Whoa. to sting it all and bite yeah. it all over its wings and stuff like that. So because it gets it high and yeah. there's a lot of examples of that actually in yeah, nature. Where birds eating like certain was it fermented fruit or, or whatever, monkeys. Or, yeah, monkeys will eat fermented Me. fruit. Yeah, yeah it's pretty, mm. pretty mushrooms. Yeah. yeah, there's it reminds me of that meme. You ever seen that meme with the bear? He like put his face in the snow and he comes up. It's like cocaine. <laughs> that's not real. Yeah. But <laughs> that's, right. But that reminds me of that. Yeah. Anyway, good stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think we're supposed to talk about Caldera today. So it's uh, it's good that you put it all over your face. Earlier, <laughs> did I did I do that? Was that earlier? You did. Oh, did I we catch that on camera? No, I don't. You know. do that before every podcast. I yeah, I do. Well, I keep it all right here. I mean, I I use I use this a lot. That's actually one of the products I use. They don't advertise it for beard, but I think I love the way it feels. Have you started beard. using the under eye cream? Yeah, I have using. Okay. Like, is this supposed to be just under eye, or is it just eye, like the whole thing? I, don't know. I do under dug. the eye. Yeah. Oh, that's all you do? I do the eyelids too. Oh, maybe that's good. I don't know. I don't. I don't want any wrinkles in my eyelids either. Eyelid. Who's gonna say wrinkles? Hold on a second. You know, who's gonna see wrinkles in your eyelids? I, well, I will. How? Under, wait, wait, close your, how you can see it? <laughs> you got to close your eyes. Did you just like, like roll up? Like that? Yeah. I, can see it, I can see it like that no, right now. Oh, dude. Yes, I can't. No. No, no. I, mean, I think get you're a little supposed more to, veiny, but I don't I know. I think you're supposed to put them through the, in the whole thing. I've been doing it, but I mean, it's only been like a couple of weeks. I, it, it, the eye cream actually feels similar to the, what's it, the, um, the base layer. Yeah. So I don't. I wonder what's what's in the. Do you know what's in the eye cream that's different than the base layer? I don't. Because oh, no. it feels it feels Look, similar. I max out on two. I love Caldera, yeah. but I'm not going to put five creams on my. I, I like the. I'll stick to two, and I like the serum. Yeah, at that point, that you got to buy a loofah. And it's a whole yeah, thing. I'll go. You know what? It, I'm talking like this. Watch, they're going to. I was going. Hey. I I used to be the same way too, but there's. I noticed you're the more. Come on, bro. Of all of us, you're the most. Sexy, like, most likely oh, to put you're, you're lotions saying. and creams on your face. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that is not true. That guy. Can't is. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, that yeah, guy yeah, is yeah, for sure okay. way more likely to do that. Way more likely. I bet you got some weird shit from all over the world that nobody knows about, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, I have Be some honest. very exotic uh, creams. No. <laughs> it's it. D- Doug is way this more is committed to testicle. staying younger looking than mm. any of us are, and yeah. I think you and I have proven that in the last seven years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just gotta look at old pictures and videos that. We we're uh, doing although, for programs. Although I will say this, so so Katrina and I, uh, anytime we go to uh, a Warriors game, we 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 take like this same selfie, right, of, of being at the game. And so yeah. I've got a great like all Looks these like a timeline. Yeah, yeah, all these years of us doing it, and we actually were just looking at this last night because we went to the game last night, and we were looking at all of them. And she's like, you know what? I think we look better today at 42 and 41 than we did in our yeah, at 31, 32. Yeah. And I agree with her. I was looking at the pic- I was comparing the old old pictures that we have. She looks there. better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if she, <laughs> she, she helps, helps I, do, I mean, and maybe it was my maybe my skin looks healthier. I look leaner. I look leaner no, back. No, no, no. I look leaner back then. Like, I, I, sure. I mean, I did that, but and we thought the same thing, but really just because my teeth were so fucked up. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Before. I was like, oh yeah. That makes I a huge used to difference. Look like you, that. You, and even just the way you smile. Yeah. To me, that's even a that's even a big difference aside from well, just I was the, mean mugging a lot more. Just like mm. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, I remember. So, well, so yeah. when my teeth were crooked, I had I had a crooked smile forever. Mm-hmm. Where I was like, just why? Because I had crooked teeth. My, so my you just naturally face, do that. Yeah. No, you just naturally do it because you're insecure about yeah. it. And, it's like, and you, when you have it since like childhood, you don't even think about it. It's just subconsciously. Sure. You 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 cl- you keep your mouth somewhat closed, and then everyone smile. Yeah. And then yeah. you and so you, it, I had this crooked smile forever, and then I got my teeth fixed. Did you wear braces or did you do I had braces? The, Okay, or are you didn't real do braces? Line? Yeah. How Remember, old were you when you got braces? I was uh, twenty. Oh shit! You were a twenty-year-old oh, man with braces. Then? Yeah. Well, nineteen, I got them, and then I yeah. hold on a second. You were a nineteen-year-old adult, yeah. and you had to wear braces. Yeah. Was that hard? 
No, what was really hard was that. <laughs> were, were, were you getting people asking you if you wanted candy? Or? <laughs> no, no, no. Were they checking your height before you got I, on the oh, well, what coaster? A, one of my one of my uh, long term girlfriends I met because she was a a dental assistant. I told the story. Did you got a hook up. I did. So I I told the story a long time ago. Ah, you guys remember yeah, that? Finally, no, 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 not on the braces. So my so my parents because I still was like under my mom's insurance originally or my dad's my stepdad's insurance or something that that uh, they they originally had my braces put on. So I think I had my braces put on at maybe 18 or 19. Okay. I had it into my twenties though. I had it for like 21 is when I think. Wow. I think I was an adult. Yeah. Well, and, but I had them on that long because my parents never finished paying the bill. And so they wouldn't take them off. No, my- no. <laughs> so you couldn't go back. Yeah. I couldn't. So, you had to, so they wouldn't take it. So you had braces. Yeah. You had braces. You can't stuck go back there. Bro, so I had, bra- I had braces for years after I was supposed to have braces. You didn't try to take them off yourself? No, no, bro. You can't really do that. Really? No, you can't. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you can. Or is it glue? Oh, oh yeah, bro. It's like uh, it's like tink. cement. On they have to use tools and everything to get it. You don't remember that? Did you not do that? No, I didn't. Oh yeah, no. It's like full on tools to get wow. to. Yeah. So, yeah. anyways, because so you, you don't want to pay the bill, so you had to wear braces. So for I, I wore it so long that the wire started they, they started to, to degrade and break off and then so then i had just had all on the so bottom like stabbing your like yes your yes and then cheeks. eventually i ripped it out and then i had all these and then i remember talking to this this girl when i was signing up for a membership i'm like tw- i'm tw- early 20s you're not I, allowed to just go to another dentist hey can you take these off for me i'd have to pay for it i didn't pay for it oh wow yeah, yeah. Oh, so total just that's it yeah 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 oh so that anyway so i i meet this girl she works for an orthodontist and she sees it as i'm talking she's like what the what the fuck <laughs> right Can you imagine that's your profession and you see someone yeah. doing that you're like what like that's not part oh of the my process God. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's not part of the process get in the chair no why that's so she literally said what the fuck and i told her the story and she's like come see me on friday she's like meet me here she gave me the address and then I went down there, met her off hours. She actually did it all there, and, and she just the, hooked you up. Yeah, hooked it up. Wow. And then I dated her. So you, yeah, I was gonna say you gotta. Come. Like, I gotta give you something. Yeah, put out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Here, let me show you what it's <laughs> hot, dude. You know what I'm saying? So worked <laughs> out. It worked. Out. Wow, that's wild. Yeah, yeah. I feel oh, so bad when I hear stories like that, man. We don't, don't, because like you were more poor than I am. Yeah. I've, already, I, I've decided that. My parents I, can't, I can't tell poor stories See, anymore. See, mine completely avoided the braces because it was too expensive. They're just like, so I just had shit teeth. Yeah, like, deal with it. It helped my personality. You know what, though? More responsible than my parents. My parents are like, yeah, we got this. <laughs> Don't, don't go back to the dentist. <laughs> yeah, don't we don't got the bill. Yeah. Oh my god! It'll work. It'll work itself. When you're ready to get them off, just <laughs> come see me. We'll see me in the garage with some oh, pair of pliers. Wow! Yeah. Did you guys have to get your wisdom teeth pulled out? Uh-huh. Yeah, you yeah, did. I did. Yeah. You know, I think that's bullshit. I think it is. Too. I think it is too. Don't and get me started. I, I remember being wow, messed we're gonna up get, after. We're that. gonna get so flamed. I got. Listen, I got flamed I, uh, last time for this. Listen, the, I feel like it's bullshit. Hate us because of you know why? Because how did we do? You know the other thing I got flamed for? You share. You gave me a meme a while back that was. The it was so funny to me. It was uh, the, how how guys with electric cars get kissed. Oh no! <laughs> His girlfriend's so, picking him up. I was telling Justin He's this. Like, mm. You know what is so funny about that is yes. that how many like how many guys you're an idiot if you think this way. They're getting like all butthurt about. It. I'm like. Dude, you know how stupid you sound getting butt hurt over a meme that I shared in my yeah. stories. It would be like me when you've made comments before plenty of times about big trucks. About big trucks. Yeah. Why? Why is it sting? Is there? Truth yes, there? right. Like I laugh at that. You do that. I yeah, think it's yeah. funny. And like so, I think it's it's funny to me that a guy you're that basically drives basically saying you're act. You're, if yeah. you drive an electric car, you're like extra sensitive baby or whatever, and they're proving it. Yeah. Exactly. By, by DMing you. you you're you're so offensive. Yeah. <laughs> Who are you? I'm not talking to you. Who the hell are you? Why That's are you crazy. directing that? I should have screenshotted their shit and reshared it, yeah. but I'm not. Well, no, I feel like. I'm not a drama I feel like, like okay, I don't, I'm going to take this back. I don't think getting your t- wisdom teeth pulled out is 100% bullshit, but I think a lot of it's bullshit. Because I think it's be- it's like the tonsils, like yeah. everybody just gets them taken out. Yeah. You know how many times they told me I have to take mine out? No, you should, you should probably take them out. I'm like, I'm 43. Yeah. They've been in there for What's a long the time. I got no problems. Let's leave them. Yeah. I feel like it's just a way for some of these people to make, you know, <laughs> we're going to get big, yeah, we're gonna yeah, get so yeah. many bad it's a procedure right. you that we can take from the insurance company. <laughs> I don't know, man. Okay. You know, they used to do, my mom got her, you know how many kids got their tonsils removed in the, I did. In the 60s and 70s? I did. Oh, yeah. For no reason. Too. Oh, like yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's just, you know, well, they, 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 I was snoring. That was like what they, I remember. At, at you get, still snore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go get your Way back. to go, dude. Way to go. <laughs> 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 Maybe they only took one out because you couldn't pay the whole bill. <laughs> 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 
loudest one in there. <laughs> like, we'll get the other oh. one when you finish paying that bill. The loudest one, too, man. <laughs> Dude, my, my wife actually, we were having this conversation the other day because we're right now we're because I still having this this snoring issue or whatever. And <laughs> she's like, and I'm like, God, I was like, there's nothing I could do, honey. I'm like, I'm I'm trying to use the CPAP, but it's messing up my face and this and that. And and I'm like, you know, the only other option is like surgeries. And she's like, what kind of surgeries? I'm like, no, no. <laughs> she's like, we're consider- not going to explore that. She's all considering it. Yeah. Yeah. Surgery. Yeah. You know? yeah. I lose my voice, but I don't snore. Yeah. Honey, I got a podcast. <laughs> Can't lose my voice. That's like, that's Dude. crazy. How it's, I was like experimenting through you. So you hasn't been able to work real well with the Well, CPAP. the problem is I think my skin is really sensitive. So mm. it's the contact. Bro, with the stop mask. being a little bitch and just become a runner. What? Wow. Yes. R- lose all that muscle, dude. And just, yes, just get- become a runner. Be just lean. We're on video now. I wouldn't lean work. cuisine, dude. <laughs> <laughs> if you call it out, it will. Like I've thought about this already because I got the we'll same. We get a thing. whole new audience of endurance. That's athletes. right. I'll be like, you know yeah. what? I'm signing up for Take my my Spartan how, race. Hey, how terrible is that? It's not like I have a ton of muscle. What do I weigh? Two ten? Like I come on. I know guys. That's because yeah, that's yeah. But guys like you and I weren't made to have that much muscle. Oh man, yeah. we were made to be skinny marathon runners. Good Justin over there, just comfortable at two forty. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> just, <laughs> just 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 mass just on accident. Just us eat and mass. <laughs> just yeah. it just happens. Just strong on accident yeah. doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's annoying. It's so gorgeous. Just calves. Never I can't, done a dude. Race this whatever, life. dude. I can't. Hey, did the you, whole getting like treaded thing. Did you guys hear? I'm a blur by rail. Did you guys hear about Brady's three losses? This is crazy in a row. <laughs> Please. Isn't that the first time that's ever happened? I can't believe you brought <laughs> Did you just read that? You brought one of my sports points up, dude. Just, oh, my God. I had that in my notes a while back because so it was because it was a big deal. <laughs> he, won, he won since then, right? So oh, he, he did? Yeah, yeah. He's won since then. But he had a lot. That, that was the biggest well, so I, losing streak. Like, yeah, I didn't know that. Ever. So the reason why I had it in my notes, even though we normally don't talk sports, I was so and fast. Are, spec- are people speculating because of the divorce thing or what? I mean, of course. People people it has to be in his head. Of course, people are going to say shit like There's that. No way you know, it people isn't. are going to say it's it's him. He's declining. His head's not in it. Blah 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 blah. Which I'm sure is which probably driving him crazy even more. Yeah. But he got off the snide. He hit four. But what I thought was more impressive was imagine do, playing in any sport for 20 years mm-hmm. consistently and to have never strung three losses I know. together. Yeah. I don't I know. Didn't even realize that. that's a crazy statistic. That's a crazy yeah. statistic. That's so wild. How that, old is he? 46 or five. Oh my god. Doug. Fact check me. Uh, okay, yeah. You were yeah, watching porn again. Uh, <laughs> okay. What if you're yeah, really going to catch you when he's off guard? Yeah. Oh, whoo, what, are you, what are you guys talking about? That's what happened. We don't choose questions beforehand. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Doug, you try to put it back Shade. on us. Hey, only 38 minutes later, huh, Doug? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what if you Sal sure? picks him in four minutes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 45 years old. <laughs> He's 45. 45. Yeah, 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 Damn, yeah. that's a, you're right. That is wild because that is not a young man sport. No, that is so wild. Is he better now? So how long has he been playing football? 21. 21 years. He's been playing for I over mean, 20 years. Yeah, you're hitting me with all kinds of hard facts. Well, okay, I think he's 21. I think he's 21. Was years. he? Was he? Is he Check better now than he was? In terms of his game smarts, I would say yeah. Like yeah. it. it ter- like because here's the thing: a lot of it at that <laughs> level is all predictive. Like you have to like be able to see the field and see everything like so quickly and so fast. Like, 21, Doug? 23. Ooh, 23. So I so, bet his, in terms of his game speed and, the, and, and intelligence, but his body's degraded. So uh. yes, and then also his the sport has changed for the better for him. So mm. when he first entered the NFL, oh, when he was very young, protective, yeah. and he was like, the, I mean, that's back. I mean, you remember like Joe Montana days. So that back, oh, yeah, they rip your head off. Oh yeah, I mean, you could you could you could spike the quarterback. Yeah, where they protect the quarterback, and he is not a running quarterback, and so he's and he's one of the best all time quarterbacks in the pocket. And so he doesn't get hit a lot for considering. Oh. He still gets hit, yeah. but not like a quarterback, let's say, in the 80s, 80s and early 90s. I remember Joe Montana would slide all the time. It yeah. would slide to prevent himself from mm-hmm. getting blasted. Yeah. Yeah, so he geez. so he doesn't he doesn't do that. And he's but to Justin's point, I would make the case that his uh I, his IQ, the bas- or basketball football IQ has continued to increase and get better. So he's gotten more efficient, more efficient. And he's done one of the best jobs. Of taking care of his health, he's mm-hmm. he's a part of the generation that I think is is beginning to really take that seriously, and he's on the front. He was some of the front front runners or leaders in that in that area. In in like you see that now, like LeBron James. Look what LeBron James is doing. LeBron James is some having some of his best cr- career numbers and some of that in the last two to three years. And look how old he is right now for basketball. I mean, it's insane. It just goes to show yeah. you how important 
you know, <laughs> understanding uh, the game, wh where, where's what's happening and where and where to predict it is. Uh, how it's it's that estimated is. those guys are spending a million dollars a year on on recovery. recovery. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure, a million, a million, a million. Mm -hmm. cryo That's therapy. not far fetched at all. No, man. it's not. Not yeah, at all. Between that and like yeah, all the devices and the trainers, and treatments, and yeah, dude, IV, IVs and I mean, the NFL yeah, test for uh, steroids. Are they are they yeah. drug tested? Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah. I mean, I think they do it sort of like randomly, and so I'm sure. I don't know. A lot of my friends are very much like you oh, know what everybody's on steroids in the NFL. You know what like, the irony is if they if that. they allowed the athletes to do just take steroids, you know how much more money they'd make. How many more? Like, how many more people would watch every time they try to create? Sure, I mean that's what brought a lot of people back to baseball. Yep. Like, I definitely lost interest in baseball because you want to the, see the the freaks. You know? Well, when yeah. you talk to somebody like a John Romano, it always makes me feel like th that most all are to J Justin's friends' points because it's just it's just kind of like we this here's a facade that we're putting out for the public. Yeah, I think that mm -hmm. they they make it so supposedly. UFC is one of the, the most stringent when it comes to, to yes, drug testing. That that I I believe. But baseball 100%. and football because they catch and hockey, people all the time in UFC. Yes, I almost never hear about people getting caught. In They'll make sports. like an example of somebody like every yeah, like an and egregious, that. and they normally take somebody who's not the superstar. That that was the big deal, even like in the old Jose Canseco days and stuff like that. Of like, they normally they won't pick their you know that the why it was such a big deal not about a Rod getting hit was because it was just like he's a big deal. Yeah, he was a big deal. He's a big name that we got that got hit and everybody thought he was the golden boy and stuff. So yeah, I don't know. I we I also would, we also can't like I just sent a picture to the group thread, Doug. If you could pull it up, the the the, the bodybuilder guy. You also the genetics on some of these people. Well, you just two, can't discredit. Okay, so two of my front close friends, both Brendan and Frampton, are eight year NFL players that have, have been drug free their whole lives. Yeah, all drug free, and, no and, alcohol, and, no smoking, no. And I believe no, them. I believe mm -hmm. them too. I believe because those guys didn't do anything. But he, but he's an but an example of an insane genetic, just crazy athlete and hard worker. Yeah, hard worker, very hard worker. But I also feel like what the NFL is is. Guys like him, and then the ones that end up being the super superstars that are the ones that took that step. Then they go extra. Yeah. So, like, I, if you put, I feel like if you put Frampton and you put uh, Brendan on a bunch of steroids, those guys would have been. Oh my God. Yeah. Have Peace. you seen the pictures of Ronnie Coleman natural when he before he took yeah. steroids? He was a freak, and then he took steroids, of course, and became you super know, Godzilla, yeah. right? I just sent a picture to Doug. It's not showing up on the TV there, Doug, but it's uh, maybe you could pull it up. This is a bodybuilder from 1925. I sent it earlier in the group thread. His name was Billy Ralph. Oh, yeah, I saw that. <clears throat> I, I, mean, didn't, I did not know physiques looked like that. Like look at that. this guy. P click on one of his pictures so you can see. What's the date on this? This is 1925. What? So he was like shredded you know, that and is muscular. The, that's the best physique I've ever seen in that era. I You don't get to see physiques look like that. Uh -uh. Yeah, look, look how crazy he looked. He was like shredded and, and muscular. And this is before... <clears throat> This is before steroids. This is before supplements. Yeah. You know, this is, and he probably had a hard labor job, 1925. So he wasn't working at a desk, I'm sure. And I mean, look at that. Yeah. That guy could walk on a physique stage today, yeah. I think. Yeah. And oh, that yeah. was 1925. That's, that's crazy. I mean, that's a good, like, classic looking physique. I mean, he's not taking the championship because of how extreme everything's got. But I mean, you're, I mean, that dude would be competitive. Yeah. I mean, limited equipment. He probably had a barbell, you <clears> know? know? Maybe a couple dumbbells. He worked on a farm or something. I mean, I have how did no he, idea. Yeah, get all that. Do you know any stats on him size? -wise? I don't know anything about this. He's not like a four foot ten guy, right? He might be. He, he might not four foot ten, but he might be. You know, like the, really, really little. Yeah, you know, taller guys. It's harder to get to look. You know that, Adam. Of course, it's harder to make you look big. Oh. Hey, there's a company that we just started working with called Joy Mode. They make supplements that are quite effective. One of them is a sexual performance booster. It actually boosts nitric oxide to help with erectile function, firmness, uh, and sexual satisfaction. It's a great product. It's science-backed. This is actually a science-backed, all-natural product. Go check this company out. They have other things as well, including a testosterone booster. So go to usejoymode.com forward slash mind pump, then use the code mind pump for 20% off your first order. All right, here comes the show. First question is from Olga Braga. Does cardio make you want to eat more compared to strength training? Subjective personal experiences experience says yes. Am I wrong? Okay, so does cardio make you want to eat more versus strength training? So this is an interesting question. Good question, Doug. Hmm. This is interesting because you may notice when you start exercising that your appetite actually increased a little bit. 
Would you say this is more just a novel stimulus response? Not necessarily, because if you're doing a, a long bouts of cardio or a lot of cardio, that's going to create quite the calorie deficit, and then your body's going to say, hey, we Being need more fuel, depleted. more glucose. And so it's not weird that even cardio would potentially uh, uh, stimulate it that way. Yeah, I, I would say extreme, <clears throat> extreme types of exercise. So, you know, mm. regular cardio, regular strength training, Fine, but if you do like something ridiculous, like let's say you go on a, a a run for three hours, right? Or you go and do a CrossFit class or something like that, right? Yeah. You're you may find yourself having some serious cravings because your body's depleted. Um, now you may notice a general increase in appetite when you build muscle and speed up your metabolism. This is what my clients would notice after training with me after three or four months. They would notice that their appetite is increasing, but it's different than cravings. I want to be clear. I think people confuse, uh, like my appetite's higher with cravings. Mm. It's not necessarily the same thing. Like if your appetite goes up, you're going to eat, you'll, you're, you're happy to eat healthy food as well. When you have cravings, someone could put healthy food in front of you. You don't want it. What you want are the foods that you're craving, the pizza, the processed food, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I would so. still think <laughs> there's a uh, window to that though, in, in terms of like if I'm a... Um if I just got into running and I noticed an appetite increase and yes, I was more depleted. Uh, but at a certain point I'm going to get adapted to that. I agree. Uh, so in yeah. the same, saying the same on the other end of it where I've noticed clients have started weight training and they were like, wow, I'm just so much hungrier. And like, you know, that CNS demand that they're now putting on the, their body, you know, it, it is like a bit of a novel stimulus. It could be like, <clears throat> you know, like maybe it's a bit longer than like that, that brief window, not like novelty. Uh, but it's definitely like that difference. Well, maybe it feels like this way. Okay. So, cause she's saying that she thinks cardio feels like it stimulates her appetite more than, than strength training. And maybe it feels that way because it's more immediate and strength training, uh, increase of appetite is, is drawn out over multiple days, because meaning faster metabolism mm. versus, or you mean the recovery? Process. Yeah. The, because, oh. okay, let's say, let, and let's just say, and let's take something not quite crazy extreme, but s s somewhat like a, a two hour run versus like an, an hour and a half, like weight training session, like the two hour run, like in, intense for two hours is going to, is going to de deplete glycogen levels. You're going to have burn quite a few calories and that that long of a run your body's going to want more immediate more calories right. uh you could do an hour and a half training session that's moderate as far as the intensity long rest periods and you're not going to feel that same demand uh for food right afterwards as you probably you burn a fraction of the calories because you burn a yeah. fraction of the calories but tomorrow you're also going to feel like you're still probably a little hungry because that training session is now demanding that your body builds more muscle. And so that over the course of the next two or three days, so the so, recovery side of it might need a little more. Well, and, and what I'm too. saying is that the, the total that your body is asking in, in demand of calories is distributed over multiple days when it comes mm -hmm. to strength training, where it's, it's hyper-focused in a smaller window when it comes to utilizing that. So that, it's more obvious on the cardio side that it's like right then. Yes, you know but, but not necessarily true from a, from a metabolic perspective. You know what the challenge with this is? It's, you can't, it's, it's impossible to separate the psychological um, effects uh, that, 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 uh, that affect appetite versus my actual physiological appetite going up or my, the physiological demands for calories going up. What I mean by that is, Oftentimes people will do a crazy hard workout and what it does for them psychologically is it lowers their inhibition towards eating more food and more calories because in their head, they're like, I just burned a ton. I just burned a ton of calories. Like, it is very common for people after a marathon to go eat a gigantic, crazy fast food type meal. Now, is that because they need the calories? I think it's less of that and more <clears throat> of I just did this big thing. I just burned these calories at celebration type of deal. So I think that there's that's part of it. Yeah, that's that's, a, that's, a, that's a, I think that's a really good mm. point. Uh, you know, it's it's reminding. I do remember like um, playing basketball uh, for an hour or two. You know, actually, initially, right after I'm done, I'm almost nauseous and I don't want to eat. It takes about a half hour, hour for my heart rate to kind of settle down and re like recover. But then I'm like, right, feel like I want. I'm, I feel like I'm starving and right. I eat a massive high calorie meal. If I trained really hard for a weightlifting session, I don't feel that same like, oh, I need to have this massive meal the same way as I do after playing basketball for yeah, an Yeah, I hour think the two. other part of it too is like, you know, if you're when your metabolism boosts, your appetite should go up. 
as well. That typically happens, and that's through the muscle building process. But, you know, exercise as a way, like, because someone may say, well, why would I work out then? That's going to make me just want to eat a bunch more food. Well, kind of, yeah, but also we're talking about healthy appetite here. I, I, again, we have to separate cravings from appetite. Cravings are not the same. It's like when my kids come to me and say, I'm starving. And I go, well, we have leftovers from dinner. Oh, I don't want to eat that. Well, you're mm -hmm. not really hungry. What you are is you have cravings. You want chips or you want snacks. Yeah. Like when you're genuinely hungry, then healthy food put in front of you, quote unquote healthy food, seems like a good idea and you'll eat it. It's right. not specific foods that you want or whatever. So it's important to separate those two. So whenever I had clients that would say certain things like this to me, I would ask them questions because sometimes it was cravings. And I think part of it was they had that, in that, that lowering of inhibitions because mm -hmm. they've now justified, well, I burned a lot of calories. The work therefore. was here. So therefore now I'm, Correct. I'm able to do this. Next question is from Corey Wecker, 98. What are some ways to prevent shin splints and patellar tendon pain when running? Let's start with shin shin splints. Do you guys remember when you figured out this the, the, the simple solution for shin splints? It wasn't until way yes. later. It took a while, right? Yeah, yeah. It, so I remember. It did like, take a while. I literally remember the day, like up until. I wish I would have known it when I was actually playing sports and I had them. I wish I knew it just as a, <laughs> as a, the, as a trainer for the first seven years. Yeah. Like, I know. For, initially, whenever I client would come in with shin splints, which is this pain here in the front of the of the shin. We would do stretching of the calves, rest, ice, elevation. Oh, mm -hmm. it's better. Go back to running. Oh, it hurts again. Could never really solve it. And in fact, I actually thought, well, once you have shin splints, you got to kind of deal with it. That's part of running. Then, I don't know, seven years into training, I had a physical therapist that worked in my studio. And she's like, oh, it's a tibialis weakness. You yeah. strengthen tibialis. Strengthen tibialis. And, and I'm like, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> there's a muscle yeah. there. And so I would have clients do, you know, with toe raises or whatever, mm -hmm. um, and their shin splints would go away forever, yeah. toe, literally forever. I, I know I taught the uh, the football team this, and um, you know had them against the wall, and then kind of um, play, you know, using their body weight against them to do the uh, tibialis raises, and it was just like they were like their mind was blown because before that it really was it was just rice that that was yeah. the protocol tape and yeah because it was all explained to us like it's these like micro fractures and like there's really no way that you can or i thought it was from train tight it. calves and so i'd be foam rolling calves all day long <laughs> yeah no literally, literally combat stretch and 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 uh, toe raises yeah combination Fix. of uh, yeah com combat stretch real a good a good combat uh, session and then into toe raises and you do that consistently and it, you'll eliminate it now this and is assuming you don't have terrible running biomechanics by the way so if you're <laughs> running is terrible yeah, that's not going to help uh yeah your yeah. cause at all um all right now let's talk about patellar uh, tendon pain it's and it's right here under the kneecap it's quite common it's more common in kids uh, what's that condition in kids? Oshkin slaughter. Yeah, uh, Oshkin slaughter. Oshkin slaughter. Am I saying that right? Um, so keeping the quads loose, um, strong, and working on hip strength uh, made a big difference. Does the shin splints exacerbate that? That's a good question. Yeah. Uh, probably because I did notice hmm. that. Hmm. I, I mean, obviously, if you're going to have weaknesses in your ankles and your hips. The knees always pay the price. Yeah, it'd be so interesting. That might be a, it would be interesting to see if just doing what we're saying with the combat stretch and then strength, if that would already start to alleviate. That's what I would think. Mm -hmm. I would I would think that would start to alleviate that by itself. Interesting. Just fo focusing on. That. I actually so I had uh, quite a few clients that would have that. At one point, I, I trained a bunch of um, Ironman uh, competitors and and uh, marathon runners, and those are two of the common issues. And with the patellar uh, tendon pain. We would do static stretching, um, and that would take care of it kind of immediately. And then I would, I would through good form and technique, I'd work on strengthening their quadriceps in deep ranges of motion, mm -hmm. and it actually would work. Sometimes a, a tight IT will also feel like patellar totally. pain too. So, and, I, and this, 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 this is starting mobility. to sound like maybe a soccer player or a runner. Yeah, so I don't yeah. know if we know anything about this person that would have helped too. And if they if they are a you know an athlete or a runner, I would also I potentially sled, sled drags potentially the address the IT because if the between the IT being super tight and then the shin splints, that could be causing a, a lot of the pain. Actually, both of them highlight something quite interesting, which is oftentimes not always, but oftentimes where you have pain, you also have weakness. Mm -hmm. So people would say, "Oh, avoid that area." Uh, oh, it's your shin. Don't do anything on that shin area to get it better. When in reality, what you need is strengthen mm -hmm. the muscles around the shin, right? Same thing with the patellar tendon. Um, is It often is related to an imbalance or weakness in the quadricep um, and issues you know, coming from the hips. So, real interesting. Next question is from Jesse Taylor Vino. 
Can someone lose 75 pounds within a year and a half in a healthy way and not gain it back? Uh, in a year and a year half? And a half? Yeah. I yeah. think so. Yeah, right. so. Two pounds yeah. a week is, uh, you got 52 weeks. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you can, can definitely methodically do this. Yeah, chip yeah. away at that. You could definitely do this within a year. I Let me think. What's the most? I've had people lose, I've had people lose 60 pounds. I've had people lose 100, 100 pounds a year. And a half. year? Did you do a hundred? A hundred, yeah. I've done. 100. I've done now, 100. was it with? Did no, they I wouldn't. Get any I wouldn't claim. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't claim that it was the uh, the best. I don't think. I, when that happened, I don't think I was at the level of coaching and training that I am today. And I probably would have. I probably would have advised him slower. Yeah. Um, but it's yeah. No, it's definitely a, a possibility. Yeah, same. It was a little. The speed was a bit of a problem with the way that um, you know uh, originally my other client like attained hundred pound loss, but like uh, everything else in terms of combining with weight training, it was just, I think in combination a bit in excess that was the cardio training. On well, that. the, yes, I agree. And the, the thing that I found out after I had done this uh, multiple times where someone had lost a ton of weight like this and in that period of time, which is totally fine is then the other thing that they now that, that plagues them is the loose skin. Mm -hmm. And had I done it with a slower, convinced them to do a, a slower process of lose some fat, let's build some more muscle, lose some fat, let's build some more muscle and done more of a kind of like put them in a bowl, a, a mini bulk, right. a mini cut, a mini, and done it longer. I think that I could have prevented how much loose. And they, good, they may have been happier too, maybe not on that hundred pound loss mark, but maybe more in like a 50, 50 or 60, 70. Right? Yeah, yeah, no, totally. That's so the, you know, older wiser coach and trainer me would now advise younger me was like oh let's just get it and then and then the next thing was like what do i do with all this loose skin it was like looking back now it would have been a that's better interesting approach. does losing it slower result in less loose skin Absolutely. I, well, I would think so but yeah is that, well it's, especially if you build muscle right like if you well, just for sure because muscle fills out a little yeah bit too. and let's be honest that person who lost 100 pounds that i'm talking about it wasn't all fat yeah they lost muscle too yeah so if i Born could stretch marks mainly because of rapid growth Rapid well, growth you, or shrink. You can get shrink. shrink. Yeah, 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 both. Either both, or, but both. it's a rapid response. Yeah, yeah, point, exactly. Yeah. So I think had I done it, because that's how I, I did it later, is real slow and gradual that way. And then to Justin's point, many times the person who said they wanted to lose 50 pounds saw what 30 pounds of like fat loss and 20 pounds of muscle gain looked on them. And that really and they was were happy and they were happy. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of times they're caught up on a scale weight because they, they remember a yeah. weight when they felt the most comfortable or they were told or they were told you're right. And so they just assume they need to do that. And then when I got a hold of them and said, no, we you can, know, you know, the real thing to, to, to consider with this, when you're thinking of, you know, doing it in a healthy way, there's definitely, physically unhealthy ways to lose weight, but, but you can lose it fast and not do it in a way where it damages your body. Right. But it's still unhealthy. And here's what I, what I mean by that. You, you want to consider the, the, the skills, the behaviors, the disciplines and that you develop along the way and what kind of relationship you have with this new lifestyle and how long that's going to take. That's the healthy part that people really need to consider because the way you're living now, if you're watching or listening to this and you want to lose, let's say, 100 pounds, okay, or you just a lot of weight, the life that you live now is the life that, is, that has created this body that you now have. The life that you're going to have to live at 100 pounds lighter is very different. And it's not just the actions. The actions are, are very different. It's also the mindset that has to be very different because if the mindset doesn't match or support the actions – then your results are going to be temporary because eventually your actions will go back to what your mindset is. So what you have to consider with your weight loss is <clears throat> what's a pace that I can do that will allow me to adjust my mindset, my lifestyle, my psyche, my behaviors so that it sticks. That's really the thing you need to consider. And slow tends to be better <clears throat> because it's a, it's a transitionary period and it takes time You're to go from a hundred pounds to 80 pounds, to so each step along the way is different than before. And in order to keep it and make it stick, I mean, that's that's something you really have to consider. That's your, the healthy part. Your really point, your point to mindset is so important. I mean, I, I just, I'm looking at the question now too. This is this is actually somebody who is, they're, they're like, I'm 300, for reference, they're 302 pounds and they want to be down to 225. The first thing that I would say to this person is I would not want you to be focused on a, on a, on a, a weight goal and a time frame at all. Yes. It's week by week we have goals. Yes. Week by week, we are talking about and there, and, habits and, and behaviors. Thank and, you. Hey, what you know? What are, what are, if if you never consistently walked 
10 minutes after meals, every, every, every meal or whatever, like that's your yeah. first goal with me. And we're not talking about how much the weight on the scale went up or down. It's like, literally we're attacking that until that becomes a lifestyle and a behavior. And then it's, Oh, you know, do you, are you getting enough fiber in your diet? And it's like, Oh, you're not. Okay. Let's focus on. And it's like every week as a coach, I'm, I'm trying to implement new good habits and behaviors into your life that are small and incremental, but that I know over, over the course of time will make a huge difference in your overall journey. And I'm not allowing you to be hung up on, oh, I need to be down to 225 and we're six weeks in and we've only done, like that's a terrible mindset to have when you have a, a, a road that's, ahead of you like that's this. The, you're hitting the nail on the head. If you, if you push the behaviors <clears throat> that lead to the result, you'll get the result. You'll be successful. If you push the result and then try to figure out the behaviors afterwards, you're going to fail. Yeah. So that's exactly what Adam's talking about. It's like, you know, oh, I want to write a novel. <clears throat> well, okay, that's a big goal. But what if you just did this? What if every day your goal was, I'm going to sit down in front of my computer and write for an hour, or I'm just going to sit there and think of what to write for an hour. You'll get a lot further with that than you will with just thinking I'm going to write a novel. So you know, it's the behaviors that lead to the results and it's the behaviors that lead to results and goals that stick forever. So that's the part you need to focus on. Next question is from Flying Lizard. They say you are most like the five people you surround yourself with. If you are trying to level up, how do you find people to surround yourself with, with whom you look up to, but don't really know what to offer them in order for them to make you one of their people? Oh, where should you find, where would you find five people or people to hang around with that will elevate you. I have a lot of thoughts around this because I 100% believe in this statement and I think it's It's totally true. Yeah. And it's in You ever find yourself hanging out with like you go you like you'll see your old friends hanging out and find mm -hmm. yourself kind of like why am I acting like yeah. this, this older version of myself? Form back so here into here's the habits. answer though. Okay, so so unpack what this person is saying. So their 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 challenge or their fear or what they're struggling with is how do I find like, you know, these, let's say their goal is I want to be a millionaire one year and they're, they're, they're stuck at a certain, and we're just going to use finance as an example. This could be at any aspect of life. And they feel like they have nothing to offer these millionaires. Well, then the answer is for you to continue to pursue growth within yourself to be able to provide some sort of, some sort of contribution to that, right? Like the, the four of us that are, that have a, a, an even split of this company are very unique and different and bring different things to the table. And if each guy was not always pursuing personal growth in himself, so they provided value to this group, then they would get left behind. And so it starts with yourself. So instead of like trying to pursue a group and be like, oh fuck, these guys are so far ahead of me. What do I do to get in this network? I, I'm, I'm pursuing growth first and finding things. And then along that way, I'm going to find like, oh, like check this out. I just yeah. learned something new that I could bring to these guys that they, they may not know as much about. I'll add to that. I'll add yeah. to that. Why not pursue five people that are growth minded? So maybe you are looking for, you know, uh, millionaires to hang out with or people who are successful in business. Well, fine. You have nothing to offer them or you think you don't. Well, can you find people like you who are aiming towards that goal, who are also growth minded, right? In my in my experience, the best place to meet people are when, or when you go in growth minded pursuits or hobbies, and then find the people there. So, for example, <clears throat> if you're on a a pursuit of growth and spiritual practice, well, you go. This is where you meet people in your church or in your spiritual circles, right? If you're like, man, I am embarking on this fitness journey. Like, I really want to get fit and healthy. I really want to take care of my body. Well, this is where you meet people at the gym mm -hmm. or you meet people, uh, you know, at the park who are exercising. Like these people are obviously pursuing right. something like you. No, it's a and great help point. Amplify if it's totally. business, you go to these, 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 you know, groups where people that are paying for totally. you know, coaching, you to the events, leveling up. Yeah. hundred percent. Where everybody's focused on that and trying to improve themselves. I, I think that's great advice. I think too, really just focusing in on to your earlier point of like just trying to level yourself up and go along that journey you just tend to attract people naturally as a result of of how much effort uh you're placing into your own personal growth which then too i i've i've noticed a lot of times even um getting into that process, how it's presented a lot of opportunity in that direction that I've ignored. Mm. And so it just be a little more receptive towards somebody reaching out, Hey, you want to hang out or, but, but you're so focused on work and accomplishing things that you, you miss out on a lot of Listen, relationships along the this way. Is, this is, this is another example of what I'm talking about. Like if you're, if you're, a, let's say you're a father, you're a new dad, you got one kid, two kids with your wife and all your friends are single. It's going to suck. 
It's going to suck hanging out with them. They're going to come over. You're not going to connect. They're not going to understand what's going on. When you are married with kids, it's a good idea to find other couples with young kids. And what will end up happening is you actually will have a better relationship with your wife. You become a better father. Mm -hmm. You end up connecting with these people because you're going through similar challenges. That's really what that means, right, is, is, is you find those people. And I, this is a hack that I, I preach. I'm going to continue to preach it because it's such an easy, simple thing. And I swear to God, I'm telling you guys right now, it's one of the easiest ways to grow in specific ways. Go on Facebook and look up groups. There's a, there's a million groups on Facebook for all kinds of different subjects and just join the groups. And what you'll find in those groups are people who are experts in whatever field or group. They'll post great articles. There'll be discussions and debates in the comments. You can get in there and you'll just learn. And this is all virtual, so it's not quite as good as meeting people in person. But it's one way to just expand well, and yourself. Or to your other point, you're going to meet other people that are doing the exact same thing as you are. Right. That are in right. there to learn and to grow. And, to, and I think that's the, 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 the easy takeaway from this is that, you know, where, where are you stretching? It's not just simply like, oh, go find five people that are really successful and just go force yourself into the group. <laughs> you know, say like, yeah. hey, I want to be your friend. Like, hey. no, you're not going to be there. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> just, just, just to work Can that I way. Can I come over to your house? But let, okay, let's, let's say this person, like, let's say that we're, we're a tight knit four right here, right? So we're, we're a tight knit group and somebody's trying to like, oh, I want to be friends with them so I can level up. Like, if, and you can't seem to find something to like contribute to the group, that means you need to get to get to work on yourself yeah, you until you can busy. figure something. I would figure out if it's me, let's say I'm the outsider and you guys have got four or five, like I'm learning about what you guys are doing and then finding areas that either one, I want to pursue growth or I'm interested in and doubling and tripling down on that so that I do have something to contribute to the conversation when we finally do get an opportunity to sit and meet. And that's exactly what I think this person, you know, that, you know, this is what I miss the most about, per, about yeah. not training people. Right. Yeah. I miss this the most because I when I would train people, you know, I would train very, you know, just people from all walks of life, but a lot of them were successful or you know, they were either executives or entrepreneurs or they were, you know, surgeons and doctors and professors. And I, I would, they hired me to train them. Meanwhile, I'm asking them questions about their day, about their job, like what's going on here, what's going on there. And I got to, I grew so much through training my clients. So one thing I miss about not training people was that, that, you know, meeting all these different people and just sucking their knowledge, you know, while I right. train them. Doesn't so cool. this remind you though, the question that, or the the statement that I brought up about Sam Parr the other day, talking about how instead of like applying for jobs that you hunt for jobs, yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. you know, instead of like, same thing, like pursue your path. That's yeah. right. Pursue, pursue the growth that you know, that could potentially contribute to the group of friends that are also on that track with you and continue to level that up and then contribute to that group. And then it, that's what will happen. And then of course it's, you, you want to find people that you have things in common with. I think that's the first step is having a common ground of interest and then being able to contribute to that group of value and adding value to their lives. And then you're, you're in that. So I think that's the answer to this, but I tell you what, this, I, I think this matters so much. I mean, I think that part of the accelerated growth from what we've built here is because everybody thinks like this. Yep. Everybody is, is Isn't life boring. Otherwise, Huh? I get bored. It is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you know it what? Still though? Crazy. A lot of people get distracted, dude. A lot of people get distracted by other things that take your, like, uh, video games and entertain yourself through mm -hmm. even like sports. I you love can sport. numb it out. Yeah. Yeah. You can get, you can get, you can get numbed out on things that give you like this immediate pleasure feeling. And, you, and, and sometimes growth is difficult. Growth is struggle. Growth is always difficult. Growth yeah. is failure. Growth is uh, not doing well at something and getting back up and doing it again. And that can get discouraging for a lot of people. And so they find themselves in comfortable places. You know sports really well. You can recite everybody's name on the team and stuff like that. So I just watch sports like crazy. Oh, you're really good at video games? So I plug into video games two, three hours a day and stuff like that. Oh, you mean reading a book on a subject I'm not very good at? That sounds hard. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you mean going to some course where I got to, for three, you know, 12 hour days, I got to sit and listen and learn something like that? Oh, that sounds hard. Like, yeah, that you got to put yourself in those situations if you really want to level up. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free guides. They can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. This one's really important, and that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press, and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 
12 reps and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets. At the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out. And less injury. That's another thing. You'll see less injury as well.